Good morning, my little nerds. I am Dr. Shereen Idris, and welcome to our YouTube channel where every Saturday morning we cover a different topic of choice. But before I jump into what we cover, I missed last Saturday. I confess, it was the first Saturday this year that I missed, and I'm really annoyed at myself because I was going strong, guys. I was literally showing up every Saturday morning. But in the last week, I was drowning legitimately in boxes as I was moving my family across town. So I apologize for missing last Saturday. Hopefully, I will make it through every other every Saturday until the end of the year. But with that being said, who the hell am I? I am Dr. Shreen Idris. I am a board-certified dermatologist in New York City. And every Saturday, except last Saturday, we cover a different topic of choice, whether it is skincare, cosmetics, a medical condition, or medical procedures. And we try to dive in deep in order for you to better understand what is available for you and how you can help yourself. We are going to cover today a medical condition, one that has been coming up more often in my practice that people have been asking me about because there seems to be confusion surrounding this. But I am talking about cherry angiomas and I wore red specifically in honor of the cherry angiomas today because it is the color of these tiny little red dots that can appear on the surface of your skin. I actually have one that I found on my arm right here. And I think it is one that I'm going to show you guys a demo later on on how to treat it if you do want to treat it. But these are moles and this is the cherry angioma and they're not to be confused with one another. So what exactly are they? And this is as low tech as it gets, but this is like the Dr. Rogers version of uh, skincare and the internet. But these tiny little red dots are the cherry angiomas themselves. All right, not this one up here, which is a spider angioma. As you can see, there are little vascular um, lines that kind of pop out, also known as selangiectasias, from a central dot. But these tiny, specific, well-circumscribed, round dots are known as cherry angiomas. They can vary in color from cherry red, like my sweater, to even darker purple, depending on how deep they are and how big the blood vessel is. What exactly is it is an acquired, meaning you develop it over time, benign, not dangerous, proliferation of your blood vessel wall. And depending on how superficial or how deep it is, it can appear as really cherry red or darker Cabernet, Merlot, red wine, deeper purple red. Um, but they are benign. However, if you notice that it is getting very big in size, changing in size drastically, becoming very symptomatic, I would recommend that you go see a board certified dermatologist to rule out anything else because there are other conditions that can appear as such. But in general, cherry angiomas, these guys are very benign and nothing to worry about. Who gets cherry angiomas? Anyone can get them. And it does not discriminate based on your race. Regardless of your race or gender, you can develop cherry angiomas in life. So what exactly causes cherry angiomas? The real answer is we do not know. I mean, in dermatology, there's a lot of conditions out there that we do not know why they happen or exactly how they happen, but we recognize patterns. And the pattern with cherry angiomas is they are likely to develop with time as you get older. And if there is a hereditary predisposition, meaning your mom, your father, your biological mom or father, your aunts, your uncles, biological aunts or uncles, your cousins, etc., have them, chances are you're probably going to have them too. We do know that they develop in mid to early adulthood and they do tend to multiply over time. We also know that hormones tend to play a role in their development. So if you are pregnant, you may develop cherry angiomas. Ding, 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 ding. I had a bunch on my chest and my arms when I was pregnant. They were not very cute. God bless my grandmother, but they reminded me of my grandmother at a younger age, and so I ended up treating them. We'll get into that in a second. But you may develop them with hormonal fluctuations. You may develop them as you go through menopause. Now, certain medical conditions can also bring them on. Remember, I showed you guys these spider angiomas. That can happen, and they can multiply in numbers if you have underlying liver conditions. And regarding cherry angiomas, there is a lack of evidence to support this, but we believe that certain chemical exposures and hopefully never ones that you're going to be exposed to, but topical nitrogen mustard, bromides, and hydrox butoxyethanol can all lead to the formation of cherry angiomas. But again, we are not 100% sure. Now, should you worry if you have them? The answer is if they are perfectly round, circumscribed, asymptomatic, and not changing, probably not. I wouldn't worry at all. However, if the pattern is changing, like all of a sudden you've developed hundreds of them out of nowhere, you should probably go get checked. 
If you're really young and you have a lot of triangiomas, meaning you're less than 15 years old watching this video, you should probably bring it up to your pediatrician to make sure that there's no underlying issues happening as well. But if you just have them sitting on the surface of your skin, most likely they are benign and nothing to worry about. And they are just a cosmetic nuisance, sort of what I had when I went through pregnancy. But if it's changing, symptomatic, itchy, getting rough, bleeding, multiplying in numbers all of a sudden for no apparent reason, i.e. you're not pregnant or undergoing any hormonal change, then make sure to see your local board certified dermatologist to make sure that nothing else is happening. So how can you treat them? No cream is gonna treat it. I don't care what you've seen on TikTok, I don't care what you've seen on Instagram or any other social media platform out there. There is no cream on the market available over the counter that will ever treat cherry angiomas. It's just not happening. So get that out of your head and save your dinero. You can come into the office to actually treat them if that is something that bothers you. Now, if you're loud and proud of them and you love them, then more power to you. But not everybody's going to love them and that is okay. There are options available to you. Number one and the best option in my opinion is the laser, the pulse dye laser, also known as the V-beam to treat cherry angiomas. It delivers a laser at a very specific wavelength that targets hemoglobin, what makes up red blood cells, and therefore it helps to collapse them and compress them. When you get this laser treatment, it turns dark purple involutes and in a couple of days disappears. You have to be careful if you are of a darker skin type because you do not want to cause any post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, but this is also true of the other treatment modalities, which include electrodesiccation. Electrodesiccation is a, you know what? I'm just gonna take you into the exam room to show you guys going to torture my manager. Yes! <laughs> Electrodesiccation, as I'm demonstrating over here, is going to burn your blood vessels. It is a fast and very simple office-based procedure that uses an electrical current that is going to be delivered via a needle-shaped electrode to superheat the skin in pinpoint areas and to basically burn it. Um, the same treatment can be used for skin tags, FYI, or even whiteheads. The other option is cryotherapy, which looks like this torture device. It is going to secrete liquid nitrogen, freezing in order to burn your skin. Someone's bugging you, you can just shoot, shoot them away. <laughs> but this is the barbaric uh, device that freezes it. And if you are a darker skin tone, I would not recommend this. This one is one that I would not recommend if you are of a darker skin tone because you're going to get a darker area of hyperpigmentation around it. And quite frankly, we have other more elegant options, starting with the laser, if the doctor that you see has the laser. And if they don't have the laser, chances are they do have an electrodesiccator hanging on the wall in their office if they are a dermatologist. The other option you could do is just shave them off. And basically what that is, is taking a blade, like a razor blade. I would not recommend you do this at home, but after numbing the skin, we shave them off and we send them to the lab so that the pathologist can look at them under the microscope to determine if they are truly benign. And I would recommend this option if you think it is changing, getting bigger, getting symptomatic, or just acting funky on your skin. And those are basically the four main treatment options for cherry angiomas. So my preferred choice, if they're absolutely benign, is the laser. The second choice is going to be to burn them. Um, the third choice is going to be to shave them so we can send them to the lab. But with that, you will get a scar. And my last choice is probably to freeze them unless you are super, super pale and you do not mind a good freeze every once in a while. But I don't know what you're into. and you do you. Um, and so that is that. So I hope this video was helpful. I am Dr. Shireen Idris. If you have any questions, any comments, anything you want to learn more about from a medical perspective, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I will see you guys next Saturday.